thanks for joining me again. Um, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make one up today. So this is just clear water on Fabriano 15 by 11 and I'm using the big eight brush. I'm gonna go a bit of blizzard crimson, a bit of raw sienna, and I'm just gonna bash that in all the way down to the bottom. Just mixing the two together. I'm just going to dip the tips in, clean the brush, and get something a bit darker. So I give a bit of light red, ultramarine, and let's create some sort of darker, darker areas up there, something, something around there. Maybe a bit of a um, bit of red, bit of black, not black paints, grey, in crimson. And dark there. Just whiz that around there. Bit more blue. Bit of blue down there. Bit of blue. Ultramarine. Payne's grey. Bit of red. Bit of blue. Just brush it in from the side. Trying to create some sort of light coming down the centre. Maybe water or something. I don't know. I haven't decided. Just, just see how it develops slowly. Um, bit of a lizard in Payne's Grey, let's uh, just a few little flags or something. Um, just take a bit of tissue, just have a few clouds in there. Let's stick a mountain in. So, bit of raw sienna, bit of blue, and I'm going to stick a mountain. Um, I'm going to stick the ice peak just there, some, somewhere like that, where you can. Uh, where you can see it against the lighter area of the sky. So it comes up there like that. Actually, I'm going to go a bit higher because it's going to be a bit higher up there. Some more like that. A little sienna down there. And it's sort of a bit smaller as it goes off to the actually there. Let's, let's make it another high bit up there. A bit up there. And what I might do is let's get a my little bit of card. Let's, uh, Scrape a few little lights and areas. Don't need to get too crazy. A bit of a light red. Sort of lighten it a bit as it comes down. Just using clean water just to lighten it, and then maybe have a tree line there or something, just so it stands out against the lighter background. And the paper strip side, so I'm just going to pull it tight and refix it with these clips there. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but stop it from coming any further down the page. And then just go a bit of, bit of blue, a bit of yellow, a bit of Payne's grey. Now this will stand out better if you dry, if you dry the paper first. So actually why don't I dry the paper first? <laughs> there goes the lamp. tree line area. So I'm just going to go sort of ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. And all I'm going to do is just sort of just flick up like that. It just looks like a load of trees. Some coming up there like that. Some coming up there. 
It's not properly dry yet. So it's good. You're getting like little soft, soft edges. That doesn't matter. Um, no, should we stick with these trees? Just pop them around. It just gives the impression of some trees growing in the distance. Now I'm just going to take a bit more. Oh, we'll sienna, a bit of burnt on that. Um, uh, does that work? I don't know if I like that. This is like. Uh, I don't know what that is actually, I'm just seeing, just messing about with it. Is that any good? Um, actually, I'm going to clean the brush. Let's get it a little bit lighter. Let's say I have a bit of green in there. Come down to like a like a river or something down the bottom. Bit of brown, bit of blue. Um, it's going to be water down there. This is like the uh, the river bank, the muddy muddy river bank, right at the bottom of the mountains. Side here. Two little rocks down there. Two rocks down this side as well. Sweeping around the corner, just dipping the very tips in, just the very tips of the hairs, just to bring them all together. Just enough water so it's a chisel edge. But nice and loose paint. Um, Sort of giving like a snake in through the mountains. Just little rocks and pebbles by the right the base there. A bit of colour on those, just say a bit of, bit of raw sienna or whatever. Just fill some of them in so they're not all, all white. Might be better with a little brush doing this, I don't know. I'm just experimenting right now. That's the, the little brush, just a tiny little zero it says on this one. Um, just we can have a little bird right there, it'll stand out really, really well in that in that lighter area. Um, maybe a couple of others as well. And then all that's left to do. I'm just going to stick my name in this corner. 
pull that one through. So let's see what it looks like with the mount on. So there's our mounted picture. So let's go in and have a closer look at it. Starting with the sky, I mean it was a very quick bish bash. Um, it was just, I was just experimenting really to be honest with you. Um, you end up with these nice lighter areas, totally unintentional, these things just happen. A um, few lighter areas taken out with the tissue to create some clouds. And sort of the distant mountains, putting using the same colours as the sky. And then just use the card just to scrape out a bit of detail, really. Also makes it look as if the light's just catching, catching the ridges there. I sort of lighten this area using a bit of just a, just a clean damp brush just to help bring out the profile of the trees. I gave it a quick dry with the hair dryer if you remember. Now you can see like, the difference here. Now that bit here is dry so you get a sharp edge and then where it's wet you get a softer edge. So sort of wet, wet, wet and then a little bit drier towards here that's when you end up with this sharp edge again. More trees on the other side. You can see how it was dry here, and then over here it got it was still wet, so you get the soft edges. Um, again, plenty of scraping done with the car just to create these rocks here on the uh, the, the river banks, all the way along the edge here. Put in, put, I put the banks in intentionally dark, knowing I was going to scrape them out, so you get more of a contrast in, and also helps make it look as if the sort of light lights coming down, just catching the rocks there. A few more on the other side. Just put a bit of raw sienna or something on there, just, just so it didn't look as if it was too much scraping. Um, another light effect, just remember how I brushed in from each side, preserving the central lit area. It looks as if you can see how again the light's just coming down, reflected in the water down there. A bit of life in the sky with our three birds. Deliberately, deliberately put in that lighter area so that they stood out. I've got a few more questions here. Um, again, these go back to last summer. I'm still catching up. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, there's um, I wrote these out. Uh, in ten, well, it, it took me this long. It must have been eight months to get round to answering them. But here we go. Mrs. Khan asks, "Your work is nice, but your supplies look too shabby to even touch. You should clean them and replace with new ones, man." Um, I mean, you can see the pallets. I mean, it does. To be fair, it does. To a beginner, I mean, it must look horrific. But with a bit of experience, honestly, you, you don't need a clean pallet. Um, I mean, I, I'll just whiz around this, and you, you pick up all sorts of different colours. And then, and as you put the brush on the paper, all those different colours are mixing together. You know, it helps create you know variation and like I say, once with a bit of experience, you realise you don't you really don't need um, a clean palette. I've never cleaned that from the day I had it, so give it a try and, and see how you get on. I think you'll be surprised. Um, Spit Rock Thirty Three asks, if you break your palette, where do you go to replace it? If you go on eBay and search for ink trays. You'll, you'll see a whole load of them on there, quite identical to that. In fact, and you can see the repair job on this. I got my dad to repair it for me. There's a piece of wire going all the way around it. And this, the corner bit here, where I hold it, it's cracked. So I might have to actually shock out and get a new clean, a new pallet, which is going to be clean. I don't know how I'll react to a clean pallet, but we'll see. Um, next question, we've got Starfish1 asks, it almost seems that the skill is in using as few brush strokes as possible, which indeed is one of the best pieces of advice I can remember watching on the telly. It was Ron Ranson, and he said, "Don't paint over something you've already painted on unless you've got a specific reason for doing so." And if you bear that in mind, it really does help you. It makes you realise, don't just. If if you have to, just put a, put some up, put a bit of paint on, and then just stop, stand back, and look at it, and see if you really need to, you know, just keep bashing away at it, or whether you can stop. Just keep stopping, and look. If you feel as if you're overdoing it all the time, just 
paint for no more than five seconds and then stop, look back, stand back and then just look at it and see how you uh, how you're getting on. Um, Greg asks, have your tools changed since you did the video three years ago? I think that refers to a video I made. Um, the introduction to the painting materials. Um, no, basically no. Um, everything's just exactly the same. Been using the same brushes, um, paints, these Cotman watercolour paints. Um, everything is absolutely identical. Lynn Amore asks, what did you use for the rocks? Um, exactly the same. She's referring to obviously a video going back to last summer. But see what I've got here is, uh, it's just a plastic card and I've just cut it up into various sizes. So depending on what size building you want, if I want a big wide one, I'll use that one and then just scrape it down. So all for the rocks. I mean for the rocks you can use any size, it doesn't make any difference. But I'm thinking in terms of when you see me scrape out the, the roof first. So depending on the width of building I want, I can either use that one or a smaller one, just use that one. Just have a whole variety of sizes ready and you're, uh, you're good to go. Uh, next question. Mijan Aberdeen asks, when I dry the paint onto my palette, when the paint is dry it starts to come off. Um, I can only guess maybe it's cheap, cheap paint that peels off. Um, I only ever use this uh, Cotman stuff. Um, I mean, I can, well I know for a fact, that, that doesn't peel off at all. Once it's on there, it stays on there. Um, I can squeeze it on, use it fresh, or I can let it dry, which is basically what I generally do. Just let it dry and it never ever peels off. Um, so I can only say, just try try the Cutman watercolours because they won't pull off your palette. Um, next question we're going um, is Sriha Namikaze asks, why didn't the blue and yellow in the beginning give off a green tint? Now they're referring to blue and yellow, I'm guessing I mean the, the ultramarine using the raw sienna. Now it's raw sienna. Now, you can make green using raw sienna and ultramarine. But you've got to use quite a, a you know quite a decent amount of it, and you get like a sort of I don't know what you call it. Like a, I think of it like as a dirty green. Like um, I don't know what exactly what colour you'd call it. Um, I suppose even if it's yellow in the in the sky, I have used lemon yellow occasionally. I think as long as it's just a just a quick sweep of the brush in and there, you're not going to really mix it in the sky. So you know. It doesn't really go green. Um, but rarely use yellow, like I say. It won't go green with raw sienna because you, you're just not mixing it enough, and it's not like a proper yellow either. It's, it's sort of I mean, when you look at it compared to compared to that, it's not really a proper yellow. Um, assuming they are talking about the raw sienna. Um, so I hope I've answered that one. And then the, the last question I've got here is. Wahlberger Kallenberger asks, I just bought a hate brush, though I'm scared to use it. Um, now I know what you mean, I mean, see the difference, if I, if I take, uh, see if I can find it, where's my, uh, oh, hang on. There I mean you might be used to using like a, like a round brush, something like that, so you mix it in the water and holds very little water, so you haven't got much of a problem controlling the water on the brush. Look how much that holds, it's, it's hardly anything. Isn't it? Whereas you switch to the hike, and it's just, especially when you start to squeeze it, look, it just comes out, it just runs out like a tap. Absolutely loads of the stuff. Now trying to control the volume of water on the, uh, on the palette, mixing with the paints. And initially, it's really difficult not to have very weak washes. You, 99 times out of 100 you'll use too much water. Um, what I do, what really helps me is, because this, because this palette's got a lip on it, see I can, I'll 
press, initially press it against the lid like that. Now that takes off quite a fair bit of the water. And then the rest of it, I'll just wipe it on a tea towel like that. And so pretty quickly then, you're down to just a very damp, clean brush without any water on it. And then you won't, your, your, your washes then won't be really wash, um, too watery. So that's how I do it with mine. Um, so my advice, always hold a tea towel in your, in your, your other hand so you've got it to wipe your, your, wipe your brush out. Um, that's all the questions I've got for this time. So as usual, thanks for watching. Um, keep practicing. Any questions, please ask and I'll see you again soon.